Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. If you're new here, my name is Anushka. So today we're gonna try the famous rainbow cake, okay? Ignore my face, I've had this makeup on all day long. I've got flour all, all over me. I've been wanting to do this cake for the longest time. I wanted to make sure I had everything I needed and I'll run through each step. I actually follow Cupcake Gemma's recipe for this and she has a really helpful tutorial on YouTube. So I will link that in the info box absolutely love her videos so yeah we're gonna jump straight into the video but before we do that i'm gonna do my post notification shout out for today and today's one's gonna go to manvishi goindan so thank you so much for hitting that bell button i really do appreciate it and thank you for such kind words girl so if you guys want to get one next time all you have to do is subscribe press the bell button and then let me know in the comments below when you've done so or you can just leave a nice comment and yeah i'm gonna stop rambling i'm so excited yeah i'm gonna stop rambling ignore the noise in the background that's the dishwasher but i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you haven't subscribed make sure to do so okay so here i've measured 90 grams of milk and then i'm going to put around one teaspoon of vanilla extract give that a good mix and i'm going to divide this by six okay i'm now going to use my food coloring paste kit i actually got this on amazon and i mentioned it in my amazon haul paste are definitely more pigmented and I find that when I get those liquid ones from Tesco, they taste awful. So these ones are really good. I've already tried them. And you're going to need orange, purple, blue, yellow, green, and red. And we're going to put a bean-sized amount in each of our six bowls of milk. And I know it's not easy. I don't ha I'm not like that professional breaker that has six same bowls. So I had to look for different ones, but it's okay. <laughs> so the recipe that I'm following, which I'll also link um, in the info box, says to put like a bean baked bean-sized amount. This is orange. Now you're gonna want 750 grams of room temperature unsalted butter. I had to put it a bit in the microwave so it could like melt a little bit. I've now softened the butter a bit. I'm gonna put 750 grams of caster sugar. I'm basically gonna beat this until it's light and fluffy. So I'm gonna try and just do this for six to seven minutes. Okay, so once you have this kind of fluffy consistency, I'm quite happy with that. Um, can't feel my arms but it's okay it's actually quite a big batter i don't realize i'm now going to slowly put in nine large eggs i'm going to start off with a little bit so i'm happy with this consistency right here just hope it goes well now we got to put the flour in and this is 750 grams of self-raising flour right here and we're just going to try and mix this slowly One thing that I really would like to know is that you do need a big bowl and I thought I had a big bowl. I would just like to disclaim that I'm not a professional baker. Okay, this is our final batter and I'm just going to give it a final mix just to make sure it's all nicely incorporated, especially at the bottom. It all looks good, you know. And we now need to measure this whole bowl. Oh, that's quite exact, you know. 2,880. I already know how much my bowl weighs. It's 315. 2,565, then divide that by six. So that's gonna be around 428 grams, roughly per food coloring bowl so you want to set your turn your scale off put your bowl on the scale then turn it back on and it will set itself as zero and we're gonna put 428 in here 
Oh, okay, we're gonna put this aside. We're gonna do the rest for the other colors. My final bowl, I'm actually four grams short, which is probably the residue from in the bowl and the spoon, which I couldn't get off, but it's close enough. Okay, so now you wanna get a spatula like this. You're slowly gonna fold the, this mixture without removing a lot of the air. Okay, that's our purple one done. That purple looks pretty good to me. Okay, let's do the other colors now. Okay, so now I've buttered six eight inch sandwich pans. I've buttered and floured them needs patience but it needs to be done because you don't want your cake to stick now do we just gonna slowly fill these pa um, pans in and level them off as well with a spatula okay so now that we have all our colors i'm gonna put these in the oven for 20 minutes at 170 degrees celsius got different layers in my oven so i'll have to be careful to check that a uh, toothpick comes out clean um, when i dip it into the cake because some might need more time cooking because of the layers of in the oven just bear that in mind um but yeah i'll be back later once these are cooked and cooled okay so i have 400 grams of unsalted butter at room temperature and i'm determined to make the best buttercream frosting i've ever made because i've never made it like perfectly perfectly right so with this butter we're gonna have to beat it on a high speed for around five minutes or more until it's nice and light and fluffy just to show you guys up close this is the consistency you want we're gonna need our scale and we're gonna need we're gonna need a lot of icing sugar 900 grams of icing sugar if you guys can't find icing sugar i got this massive uh, three kg bag from amazon okay so i'm gonna measure out 450 grams first and then mix it My cakes have cooled down and they came out really well. We now wanna go from this, straight from the cake tin to this. We have to like carve it out and level it. And this is where I can bring out my trusty old cake leveler that I got from Amazon. And I also took something round. You can use like a plate or anything that's slightly smaller than the size of your cake. And you're gonna cut around it with a knife. And then we're gonna level the cake with our level cutter. Um, and I've got it at three marks. So I'm just going to do a voiceover over this bit but after I finished leveling my cake I got this base that you can get on Amazon to place the cake on top of and then I'm using some of my buttercream and applying that on the centre of that base and we're going to start off with our first layer and you just want to press that down slightly and what we're going to do here is apply a really thin layer of the buttercream frosting you want to think of this first layer that you're applying as if you were spreading a like peanut butter on a piece of toast. It's going to be really thin just to lock the crumbs in place and then you want to go in with another thick layer of the buttercream. Now the feedback that I got from my family was that I could have applied a little bit less buttercream in between the layers because it was a bit too much. Um, but yeah you can you you can put as much as you want in between the layers to be honest but next time I'll probably put a little bit less. So yeah, I basically did that in between each layer. I'm just going to let you guys watch this bit because I don't know, I found this really satisfying to watch.
Now once you get to your last layer you just want to do that really thin coat on top because we'll do another thick layer at the end and um, so just do a really thin one to cover it up. Now we're going to do a crumb coat. Now a crumb coat is basically a thin red layer around your cake which is going to lock in all the crumbs because if you went in with your thick layer of buttercream um, you'll just find a lot of crumbs in it and it won't be as neat. So this is just to lock everything in place. You want to use backward and forward mo motions with your spatula. I use an offset spatula which is really helpful now try to link everything in the info box so as you can see i'm really like pushing the buttercream into the cake as if i was like spreading like peanut butter on a toast or something like that so you just want to cover it all up like so i'm going to put this in the fridge for 30 minutes to an hour so that it can completely cool and harden so that when we put the second layer the crumbs don't mix in with the top coat so my cake has been in the fridge for an hour or so and it is nice and solid so the crumbs won't mix with our last layer of buttercream so i'm going to take the rest of my buttercream i did have to make a little bit more because i think i put too much in between the layers you can make however much you would like to but i'm really happy with the color of it it's a nice white shade and we're just going to start applying this on the sides i'm going to put a nice thick layer i definitely recommend getting these um turntables because they're really handy when it comes to applying your icing i know this one was from amazon i'll try and find it if i can now i can put some on the top now that that's coated evenly um my one of these kind of like cake smoothers came with the cake stand set with the the tent the turntable um and it's really handy when you want a smooth base i feel like today i've made the perfect buttercream so for once i might be able to get like a smooth layer so let's see So once it's time to get smoother, I'm just wiping off the excess of my um, cake smoother so that we can get the smoothest finish ever. Honestly, I think that's the smoothest I can get it. Now, I think I'm happy with that smoothness. It's definitely better than any other cake I've done. And then I'm just going to, from the outside in, I'm just going to level off the top bit. But you want to, like, clean your spatula each time. Just that, so that we can get a smooth border. I'm just going to smooth the top. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. I am happy with that. I'm going to use some of these silver pearls. I think I'm just going to... You can crush up some of the remaining of the cake and crumble it on the sides but i just found these little pouty things quite cute this is the most decent cake i've made aesthetically so we're gonna cut this up this is what the cake looks like i'm pretty happy with my smoothing skills okay now for the moment of truth i didn't even cut a straight line what is that line it's not even straight Moment of truth, guys. Come on. Come on. Oh, did I just do that cake? Obviously, I need to cut a bigger piece, but look at the layers. I need to cut a bigger piece. And hopefully, this one can stand on its own. Just the 
look at that. I'm so happy with that. I mean, my purple layer was quite small. I could definitely improve on that. But that looks pretty good, guys. I am dying to taste this cake. And honestly, doing this cake was the most therapeutic thing ever. I spent all day doing it, yes. It was so satisfying and the result is amazing. I mean, this is my cake. I did that and just look how well I smoothed the edges. Okay, I'm gonna try my piece right here. Let's give it a go. This literally tastes like I bought it from the Hummingbird Bakery. Like, it literally tastes like I bought this. I should go sell this. 30 pounds of cake. Oh my god, the sponges, perfect. The icing, perfect. All the layers taste really good. I just wish there was more of the blue and the purple. Maybe the weight crushed it a little bit. I don't know, but I'm really pleased with that for my first time. So yeah, guys, I'm so proud of myself. Why do I feel like I've got flour on my face? If I do, ignore it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really, really, really enjoyed doing this. Honestly, I had so much fun. It was so therapeutic. And yeah, I'm so pleased with... I'm so pleased with the result. I need to bring everyone a piece so they can try it. But thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.